on. Hello and welcome to the Women's Cave. Cave. I'm a little behind, but I feel like it's because I have more wisdom. So there's more weight to my Oh, also oh, the so you gained weight and you got old. I love it. I love it very much. Wow. <laughs> I love it very much, Monona. I love Shots it. That's fired. <laughs> what? What? No, 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 it's not. No, it's y'all, it is not too harsh. It is not too harsh. She has been wearing my clothes and then and then was like, Jade. I don't know how you do this, you know, being, you know, being larger than you, than, than me. I don't know how you, how you do this. And that's it. So you see shade, shade comes back. Just saying. I guess I'm so. Saying. It comes back because the earth rotates and the sun is up. So of course shade. That's Winona back. over there. Oh yes, I am Winona. And wow, <laughs> I reverted back to like my 12 year old comebacks. Yeah, I love, I loved it. I was like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> oh, you're not making it better. You're making it oh. worse. Man. I love it. Anyway, love we're it. not here to talk about us. Are and we? no, I'm not jumping ahead of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Just, just, you heard that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I we think, wrote books. Yeah, we did. We like to call them literary life guides with pop poetry. I'm sorry, Winona. Was that too hard? No. I had to I, like I had to come back on it because I was like, oh wait. You know, she's my best friend in the world, y'all. So, you know, like, we can be harsh. But don't y'all say it. Don't you say it. It wasn't mean because it was just too funny to be mean. I oh, like, thank I you. I love this. Anyway, right. So we're well, literary life guides with pop poetry. So uh, if only I were me and let's see. And I thought the voice would be, I'm just going to do it like backwards. It's Monday. It's Monday and I had to wake up. So, and, and I, funny I were me and I thought the voice was bad. bad. And I thought being grown up was easy. And I thought I did my journey alone. And these are like four of the 20s seven books we have is it 27 i'm glad somebody's keeping seven i'm pretty sure all right you know once you get past five you just stop no you don't you don't but like i have to write another one you don't okay Okay. anyway (laughs) and you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com i should have really had a second cup of coffee i see that now you should should and cocktail (laughs) or a cocktail oh that would have worked too but uh we have a co-host today co-host Hi, my name is Tanya Todd. I'm an author and actress from Las Vegas. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, y'all, y'all need to go on over because Tanya has a wonderful braid today. It looks lovely. <laughs> it looks so lovely. I'm almost jealous enough to braid up my hair, but it would take too long to unfrazzle it. So I'm just anyway. laughing. I'm laughing because Winona braiding is just a really thing. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we have a wonderful guest today. Wonderful guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Keshni Naiko Washington. Um, I'm South African and I've lived in DC since 2012. And I'm a writer amongst other things, writer of fiction. Nice. nice. All it's right. so wonderful to have you here today because it's like someone who lives in the same state. Because <laughs> normally it's someone who lives on the same side of the country as, as um, oh my word, I forgot her. Tanya. Name. It's Tanya. Girl, I was about to call her so many different no, names. No, don't call Tanya. her. Tanya. So now it's nice to have someone who's on our side of the state. Okay, tell us what you are hoping to get published. Well, my current work in progress is a YA contemporary fiction novel, and it's set in D.C., but it's got a South African twist to it, um, D.C. in the late 80s. And my uh, protagonist is um, the daughter of an exiled South African freedom fighter who's ended up um, with her dad in D.C., so... That's my novel at the moment that I'm hoping to get published. You said it's contemporary, but it's the late 80s. So you, that know. sounds like historical fiction. How would you even know about that time? <laughs> I, I think the technical category for historical is kind of like um, further back in the past. So it's still lumped under contemporary. But um, yeah, I have to do a bunch of research, which involves like listening to a lot of 80s music and watching a lot of 80s movies, which is oh. awesome. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like awesome research. Count me in. Get some of that research. Like, I, I feel like I should do that and then like take it off on taxes. As, since, you, since you're right now an amateur anthropologist in uh, 80s culture, can you tell us what you like best so far and what do you find most confusing about the 80s decade? always thought the 80s was really weird um like the clothing choices the hair choices <laughs> um but obviously I've spent most of this year kind of deep diving into it and so I think the, the coolest part is the music I you know been listening to Janet Jackson and you know I don't know salt and pepper 
um you know like all kinds of like cool 80s my book is set in 1988 so it's kind of the end of the 80s you know close to the 90s obviously um so there's a lot of like really cool music that I've learned to reappreciate and I've learned to reappreciate the side ponytail that is the best ponytail to do I love that thing Okay, like, but for okay. some of us, it's just a big puff on one side. It doesn't look good at all. <laughs> well, that's the you have natural hair, though. That explains. Yeah, but natural. Yeah, so it would just be like a second head of hair on my. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good though. It's good if you wanted to block the person behind you on the side of you. You'd be like, no, no, sit on that side of me. No, seriously. <laughs> and just lean over a little bit. You know, you're not watching any of this program. Not happening. <laughs> Oh, 80s cartoons. I've also been watching 80s cartoons because my character has a little sister who's, you know, um, in middle school. So, yeah, I got to watch. So what counts as an 80s cartoon? Uh, I was watching Gummy Bears. Do you remember Gummy Bears? My brother <laughs> liked gum. Oh, wait, the food. Those are food, right? No, it's a cartoon. Care Bears or the Care actual show with Gummy? No, it's gummy bears. They drink this potion and then they get this energy and then they jump up and down and like they get- this. I didn't ever know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I no South African that. thing. <laughs> oh. So that's oh, the okay. interesting thing. Um, of course, I remember stuff from, you know, the nineties or whatever, but it's South African. Um, we had different, sometimes we had different shows in South Africa because we were under apartheid for a while. So we didn't get everything at the same time as it was coming out in America. And then some things were censored as well. So that's right. Um, you guys thought that uh, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills won the Super Bowl four years in a row, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Growing up in apartheid segregated township, how did that inform your writing? I, it actually informs every single piece of writing, every single word that I write. Um, I, I, I guess I thought that I had, so we, we, democracy happened in 1994. So I went through a lot of, um, trying to resolve everything, you know, personally and professionally and entering like the workforce that was majority um, white. I imagine people. you must be quite a bit older than you look. I am. <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> no, so I was uh, 16 um, in 94 when um, we became democratic. So I was quite a politically influenced teenager, um, obviously, um, and um, it was, I spent a lot of time being angry as well, um, growing up the way I did, but I tried to kind of resolve that and kind of leave it alone. And when I moved here in 2012, um, obviously Obama was president at the time. And so it was a different kind of scene. Um, so I was quite happy to move here um, uh, when Obama was president. And then as things progressed over the past, recent four years, um, I found myself um, having some PTSD um, to apartheid South Africa. And a lot of this old feelings that I thought I had resolved within myself did kind of reemerge. And it's also over the last five years that I've become um, a writer, essentially. I think I probably always was one, but it kind of reemerged. And so everything I've been writing about for the past um, five years um, has been uh, historical, as you mentioned, um, and also a contemplation of what it means to be South African in America, what it means to be an immigrant, what it means to come from, have, have experienced what I have experienced in my early life, um, and then be kind of seeing elements of it reemerge here, um, which is very disconcerting to me. So like I said, I have a lot of PTSD. Um, so it, it, it informs everything I write. Um, the novel I'm writing currently is about the 80s, like I said, but it's about an exiled South African freedom fighter. But it's also about being an immigrant in DC. It's also about being an outsider um, and understanding racial um, relationships as well. South Africans always think about race. Um, I have, I'd like to go a whole different <laughs> direction and make this a little lighter of a comment. Yes. <laughs> but what did you find odd about the U.S. About U.S. culture, like the way we do things compared to South Africa? 
Um, well, it's kind of like moving to a different planet, actually. It's nothing, nothing like what I guess I expected. I guess because it's an English speaking country, I imagine things to be very similar. When you go to a country that speaks a different language, then you expect everything to be different. But I guess the most, what is the most unique thing? Mm. It's, I guess, a very different in terms of when I first moved here, um, everything was very um, politically correct. <laughs> so even at work, as a South African, like I said, I'm pretty used to um, talking pretty openly about race or things like that. Um, and I was often told that I need to be a bit more politically correct, <laughs> as, uh, you know, the things that I can talk about. So that was interesting and different. Um, the other thing that was different is you have all kinds of different chocolate that I've never heard of. So um, we don't, we didn't have any kind of Hershey's or everything that you have is foreign to me. So every single piece of chocolate, like Butterfingers and, and Snickers and absolutely everything. Sounds like an amazing revelation. <laughs> yeah. This new world of chocolate. <laughs> I, like, I, what is this? Like... I don't know what that is. So like everything that people talk about or everything that I see on the shelves is all completely foreign to me. Um, okay. From okay. chocolate to types of butter to types of bread, like everything is different. So when I first moved here, it used to take about three hours for me to do grocery shopping because I don't know which <laughs> bread to pick. And there's like 300 types of butter and 300 types of bread. And I would just like stand there going, um, this one or this one. <laughs> so that was like a weird thing because you always know how to go grocery shopping. But I, even though everything was in English, I, it was all foreign to me. So what's your favorite chocolate so far? Um, I think I like, uh, well, we did get M&Ms towards the end when I was leaving. So a lot of things sort of came to South Africa eventually. We even got our first Starbucks like recently. <laughs> um, but I think I still like M&Ms. Nice, nice. So these things that we take for granted, you're saying, are just now making an appearance. <laughs> yes, I remember when the first McDonald's came to South Africa. <laughs> 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 so I can't imagine we discover like discovering Snickers for the first time. Like I think I would eat way too many. Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, I still have a problem with eating way too many Snickers as it is. <laughs> so I can't even imagine. Like, oh my goodness. That means you missed the Mars bar because those were even better. And then they got oh. rid of them and they replaced them with Snickers with almonds, which are not the same thing. What oh, yeah, yeah. The Mars I bar? I like I like Twix too. That's um oh, that's all M M&M and M Mars chocolate. It's all the same company. <laughs> Not that I know way too much about it. <laughs> of course you do for your staff portfolio. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's why yeah, I so it's know. it's it's everyday things that are very very different. Like when you're when you're not from here, so it's kind of foreign planet but familiar. You know. I was going to say Get back to your books a little bit. How did your work with the nonprofit in DC, you know, how did that affect what you wrote? Um, I guess in a way, for me, it was a good introduction to a foreign planet because everybody I worked with at my um, organization was from um, outside the country. So there was a whole lot of people who all had left everything they've known and come to a new place. And even though we were all from different places, we kind of had this common thread of, um, you know, restarting, um, recreating um, a life here um, and dealing with missing, you know, people back home and dealing with everything being different. Um, and so I think how that informed my writing is that it just, it really, the conversations with people got me thinking about this theme quite a lot about what it means like I said to be an outsider what does home actually mean am I betraying my um, South Africanness if I also start regarding America as home which is something I really had to think about as well um, and because for me I'm very proudly South African and so to expand my own definition of who I am, where I'm from and what home is, was a big deal. And I got to have a lot of these conversations with these people from all over the world that I worked with. I have like a Mongolian friend, a Kenyan friend, you know, it's just people from all over the world. 
So how the DC is cool like that. Right. <laughs> it sounds amazing, actually. <laughs> Not to mention the food. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. No. Yeah, it's it is. so cool for it's, that. It is pretty cool like that. I mean, we live in a not that far from dc and we remember going over to dc and going oh my goodness so like everyone in the world has like a representative here yes (laughs) you can find every kind of person in dc exactly exactly and you go to like all the restaurants like all different kinds of restaurants people like did you know something about that yeah actually my friend that's from ethiopia they told me that i need to go and then they introduced me and they're like and then you, know, you drive back home to Annapolis and, and they go, huh? huh? <laughs> you ate Ethiopian food? Isn't that weird? No. no. Ethiopian food is great. Right? making is weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was weird. But I mean, I, it's DC. And... I'm sure there's all kinds of people in Vegas too. Yes. yes. Yeah, but I don't know that I've ever had an opportunity to eat Ethiopian food. What? Oh, okay, no. yeah. I'm oh. sorry. The moment you eat Ethiopian food, you become addicted. Yeah, so <laughs> and that's like you're never going back. It's yeah. And they have like Ethiopian coffee, and you're like never going. Oh back. wow! Oh yeah, that's it's, delicious too. Right? You never go back. Like you're like, dang it! Why did I do this to myself? Why are we having this talk during lunchtime? <laughs> like we're just talking about food and coffee and all these right delicious you and chocolate. And that's what so, we do. I was going to ask you about Signal Fire, but first, let me ask you this question. What food do you miss most from South Africa? And then let's talk about how you got started on the Signal Fire, Signal Fire podcast. Okay. Um, well, it's a bit of a list, like I said, because everything is different. But when my friends come visit me, I ask them for random things. Like, um, so we have a kind of chocolate called Fa One, and it's kind of similar to a Mars Fa, but it's just got more chocolate. Um, <laughs> thicker layer of chocolate on top. And I asked them to bring me cereal. Like <laughs> we have a cereal called Pro Neutro, <laughs> which is random, but um, it's, I just miss the taste of it. There's nothing similar to it here. And I miss um, hot crust buns, which is, mm. I don't know if I've seen some kind of version here, but it's a big deal in South Africa. We have like hot crust buns season in Easter. And we have Christmas. We have a song and we never get to eat them, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we have Christmas mince pies. I also miss that a lot. Like, so those are not um, savory. They're actually sweet. They're dessert. You can tell I like dessert. Um, and they're like a special thing that's made at Christmas, um, which we don't get here. Yeah, I don't. You know the funny part? It's like, I remember how. I got sidetracked. I can't remember the second question. <laughs> from, from, from South Africa, yeah, yeah. actually. We have friends from South Africa that would actually, when they would fly back and forth, because they had a business between the US and South Africa, they would bring them. I and do remember them. I remember yes. them. <laughs> and, and I was, I was like, like, huh, they, this they, is what the song is about. And I remember telling my teacher this is what the song is about. And she was like, that doesn't look like it. I'm like, that's what it's about. Um, and then um, I remember the, the sweet pies that you're talking about. Yeah, but so, the second question, question was Signal Fire podcast. Oh. Right. Um, so yeah, I started a podcast this year because that's what you know writers do. Um, and it's called the Signal Fire series. And so named because um, for obvious reasons, I really believe that we need to send up flares, signal fires, smoke signals, whatever we can to help other people find their way um, in the world. It's it's something that's really important to me, setting um, a kind of example, putting those examples out there so that other people can not feel so alone. So part of the goal of it was to talk to South Africans and Americans and to talk to people who are doing something a little different from the norm, who are taking a chance mid-career like I am, who are um, just doing something unexpected for what stereotypes people associate with certain kinds of people as well so and I wanted to have a a conversation and expose South Africans to Americans and Americans to South Africans um sort of in like as if I was inviting them home and like introducing them to each other which has been kind of a good idea yeah yeah I mean there are so many people who are like well you know if I want a sensitivity reader about x y or z how can I find that well expose yourself to different types of people you are making it very easy for people to do that Yeah. And there's so much to learn from each other. And there's so much that people um, don't realize, like, that the gap is not that wide between people. So 
I've been really enjoyed like hearing my South African friends listen to some a friend of mine from this side of the Atlantic and hearing you know people from that side of the Atlantic listen to somebody who I um, know from from there and like everybody going oh that person's so cool and I like what she's doing and I want to do that too and you know it's kind of it's, it's very gratifying to kind of, to spread a little bit of um, positive examples out there in the world and like have some positive conversations. Absolutely. And I think that's the reason why we named our book And I Thought I Did My Journey Alone, because the more you travel, the more you talk to people, the more you recognize that it's called the human experience for a reason, because it's actually all humans experience a lot of the same thing. You don't think so because you just don't talk to them, but they do. Yeah, they do. <clears throat> Tanya, did you have any other questions? Because I know she does. She always has the best. I do questions. because you know you're talking about this connection. I want you. Your website mentions your writing group. So talk to us about the importance of a good writing group and how did yours help you with your journey? Sure. Um, so I have no formal writing training. I don't have an MFA. I in fact went the other direction. I have a science degree, but. Um, when I first started writing, finding a good writing group really helped create um, a safe space for me. Uh, number one, it helped me learn lessons as we, you know, each learn from each other. We're very open and we always like throw a question out there to be like, hey, what do you think of this? Should I start my start? Should I start my story here? If I put this in my book, would it seem too coincidental and artificial? So we get to kind of learn from reading other people's work and um, seeing more examples of what other people are doing, what they're, what, what they're struggling with and what they're getting right. And we automatically learn that way. But the most important um, benefit for me has been just the sense of community. So I get to go through the emotional roller coaster <laughs> of being a writer with people who know exactly what I'm feeling, what, I'm, what I dream of, um, exactly what I want to achieve, what I want to do. They know it without me having to really explain. And having that safe space and people who are kind of with you on this journey um, has, been, has been more meaningful than anything else that I could have done. Absolutely. I mean, I think I 110% agree with that to have someone to know what you're talking about. Where you're just like, and then the editor sent it back. And I was like, this is a half a manuscript. Like, I, I had a whole one and then you sent it back and that was half. <laughs> They're like, cause it needs to go. No, 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 it didn't. No, <laughs> it just, but I mean, obviously they did it for a good reason. And that had people like laugh it up with you about that, you know, later after you stop being mad about it. You know, like they're like, yeah, remember when you said that your editor? Yeah, yeah, I know. And it, yeah, I mean, it's just like anything else in life. It, being a writer can be pretty lonely, or you can kind of think of yourself as being on your own. Um, it can happen pretty easy because you spend a lot of time in your head, um, alone in your head with your um, the voices that visit you there. I, I tell my sister, I tell my sister, I kind of feel like I'm haunted because you know characters come to me and I'm like, maybe I'm haunted. I don't know what's going on, but they came to me. I know they, the names. They come to you. The they story. talk to you. They tell yeah. you what. Like, shouldn't you be writing about this? Because I would really like this to happen. And this is what I'm going to say. And it's like, I am so busy right now. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> exactly. It's the strangest kind of thing. It's the strangest kind of thing. And it's hard to explain to other people. But not feeling alone in that and not feeling, feeling alone when you really struggle with it. And then there's a whole lot of, I know you guys don't suffer from it, but there's a whole lot of like, we call it like imposter syndrome or whatever. Um, but it's just a about like building your confidence and having people to support you. And you just need a little bit of that sometimes to just keep going when things get a little tough. And community is amazing that way. It is. I yes. just had imposter syndrome on Friday and it took like a whole two hours of my friend chatting with me. Although I don't think she knows that she made it worse. <laughs> but I mean, by the time I was off, she, she made it much better. <laughs> Before then I was like, this isn't going well. <laughs> Not at all. But anyway, no. Yeah, it was, it's 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 a weird world writing because um, let's see. I think that's how many times you, you read this meme. It's like the only world where we get to listen to the voices in our head and not be called crazy. Because as Tanya said, our characters do a heck of a lot of things that we <laughs> did not plan for them to do. And they're, they're like, just... so I'm turning right. 
I'm going to go 20 miles down the road and then I'm going to do this. And then this is who I'm going to meet. And then I'm going to stop driving and you can figure out the rest from there. I think that's good enough. Yes. Okay, good. And you're, you're like, like, wait, but, but my- I write you. And they're like, yes, but I'm driving right now. And you're like, but my plot card, I plotted it out. Oh, <laughs> that's, <okay>. that's cute. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think we should probably we, yeah, we'll wrap, wrap this up. up. But wait, wait I want to talk about her book club really fast. I mean, I, th- I think her book club is something that people should know about. Tell us how you got that started. How'd you come up with the idea and how does the club actually work? Because your book choices are incredible. So that's also part of um, the contribution that I thought I could make just being physically here and having um, such a rooting in South Africa that I thought I could recommend both um, African books and American books and do the same kind of uh, cross-pollination to readers on both sides. And I have friends who are readers on both sides. So I just started with that intention. Um, And there are so many amazing South African books and African books in general that I still want to recommend. And there are so many amazing American books that I've discovered this year. But I try to make sure that um, it's something that you may not have heard of. Um, necessarily, and just to put it out there on this side as well. So to promote South African writers, but also to give you something interesting that might be a little different, because Africa is such a big place, and South Africa has, you know, many sides to it too. So anyway, so my goal was to try to cross-pollinate literature and um, get that out there. So how does it work? Do you guys meet and discuss the book, or do you just make recommendations and who people read them? What, what so kind I, of make recommend- I make recommendations. You can sign up um, to my newsletter on my website. Um, and uh, so you'll receive like a monthly recommendation or something interesting from South Africa or here. Um, and my friends and I have, uh, we meet. So we have a book club and these are still my South African friends. So we have to you know, figure out the time zone difference. Right. They're seven hours ahead <laughs> and we meet and we discuss um, the books. And in fact, um, one of the latest ones that I posted, um, The 17th Suitcase, um, the writer is actually South African who moved here in the 80s. And he's um, 83 years old uh, now, but he's published the story of his moving his family like from South Africa to here. And um, I actually contacted the um, his daughter on Facebook and they're pretty cool. And she's like, I'll hop in on your uh, book club. So let me know Very when it's cool. happening and I can come in and answer questions and like, so anyway, yes. So um, mostly it's online, um, you'll see recommendations, but I do also have meetings with my friends. I appreciate the book recommendations and I made myself a nice little list <laughs> and I'm going to join hey, your newsletter. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. She's all happy now. Look at the smile. I, I, so much bigger. Both of y'all smiles are so much bigger. I oh like it. Word. I like it so well, I feel like you've introduced me to another person who gets it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So I think though this is a great place is to it, wrap up. Yeah, so Although I wanted where, to ask about your queries another time. So, so where can people find out about this amazing book club apparently and sign up for your your newsletter Newsletter. why why did it go um well um you just go to www.keshneywashington.com and i'm also on instagram at knw author and yeah sign up find me there check it out um talk to me drop me a message i love meeting people and talking to people on both sides of the atlantic like i said so yeah can you can you spell keshni for us oh it's k-e-s-h-n-i and Washington as in DC. All right. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And so, I still think it's weird that you've actually followed us on Facebook, uh, on like Instagram, because I'm like, dude, we have nothing like as important as you say to say. Yeah, I know, right? But I, I do look cute in that we, last picture. We're just oh. like, <laughs> look at our mug by the fire. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, You're master you. connectors, though. <laughs> well, we try. Tanya, where can people find out more about you? I'm on social media at Ms. Tanya Todd, and my website is www.mistanyatodd.com. I'm going to check it out now. <laughs> <There> it <is. laughs> Just like that. All right. 
Well, you can find out everything your ladies are doing, including our new podcast, which is the Ladies Tale Podcast, where professional actors read my script. Absolutely. And some of the interviews with those actors um, right there on the homepage. You can just click it, go ahead, listen to it. More importantly than all of that, no, 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 mm -mm, no, I'm going to get this done. No, okay. no interrupting. I love you, but no. Can go to the ladies tab go down to the middle and see the charity that we probably support maybe you can support them too if not at, could you please just send them a nice note to say thank you for doing this work in the world this wonderful work in the world we would really appreciate it winona you had something to say oh i did first of all i want to say everyone needs that kind of encouragement i'm a narcissist and i still need that kind of she encouragement and then secondly i wanted to say um check out the interview with the the voice behind ronald because it's out and it's like one of my favorites okay from the ladies tale podcast did you can finish now Okay, just remember, y'all, that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Will Nona. And Jade, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, thanks for listening.